So hi, and welcome to task 3 of module 5 for the Open Science MOOC. This is all about how to integrate Git with RStudio. Now this task is designed for students and researchers who want to implement a system of version control within a standard R-based workflow. This can be applied to a range of software development, data analysis, and project management tasks. Your future self will definitely thank you for the convenience of learning this. So just before we start, don't forget you can join in the discussions over at our open Slack channel with the URL on the screen now. And please do introduce yourself at hashtag module 5 open source and tell us a bit about who you are, your background, and how you ended up here. The estimated time to complete this task is about 30 minutes, but the estimated time saving once you've finished it is, com is virtually infinite. So congratulations on making it this far. If you've read this, then hopefully by now you've survived pull requests, webhooks, and can even tell us what the F in FOSS stands for, and it's not frustration. Hopefully, you might have overcome any skepticism or reluctance towards the benefits of things like GitHub and open source software, and are now ready to take the next step. Before starting this task, please make sure that you've already completed the first and second tasks, so that you're more familiar with GitHub and some standard open source practices. This task will teach you how to integrate the version control software Git with the popular coding environment RStudio. And just for the record, it's Git as in GIF or God and not JIT as in the wrong way of, I guess, pronouncing things. So if you're one of those researchers who thinks that having code spread across multiple hard drives that is just waiting to break, so or Dropbox or Google Drive or some other form of non-specialist software, then this task is just for you. If you've ever experienced the mind-numbing process of having multiple final versions of a paper bouncing between different co-authors, then this task is also perfect for you. All of us are guilty of these sorts of things once in a while, but what we want to show you are that there are better ways of doing things for you, future you, as well as those who might benefit from your work. So what is Git and how is it different to GitHub? Well, Git is actually a version control system, which enables you to save and track timestamp copies of your work throughout the development process. It also works with non-code items too, such as this MOOC for example, the majority of which was written in uh, Markdown in RStudio and also integrated with a Git and GitHub workflow. Now this is important for you, as all research goes through changes, and sometimes we want to know what those things were. For example, did you delete some text that you now think is important? Well, version control will save that for you. Did your code used to work perfectly, but is now buggy beyond belief? Version control. It's a great way to avoid that chaotic state where you end up having multiple copies of the same file, but without a silly or annoying file naming convention. Things like having final underscore revised underscore 2.2 underscore edits underscore version 1.7 underscore more edits dot txt will become a thing of the past. So GitHub, though, is different because it's the platform that allows you to seamlessly share code from your workspace, such as your laptop, to be hosted in an online space. So it's sort of like the public interface to Git. The primary advantages of both Git and GitHub are, firstly, you get to keep copies of all of your work through time. You also get, get to compare this work through different copies through time, which can help you to spot bugs or errors. Other people can also collaborate openly with your work. You end up with a, both a local and an online copy of your work that remain perfectly in sync. It's also fully transparent as to who made a contribution, why they made it, and when. And also, you can have multiple people working on the same project at once in parallel. So while this workflow was primarily designed for things like source code, it hopefully now is instantly obvious how, can this, how this can become a powerful tool for virtually all research workflows. Now, a little bit about RStudio. So RStudio is a popular coding environment for researchers and software developers who use the statistical programming language R. It comes with a text editor so that you don't have to install another one and switch between. It also includes a graphical user interface, or GUI, to both Git and GitHub, which is what we'll be using throughout the rest of this task. Now, isn't it nice when brilliant open source tools integrate seamlessly like this? This should help to make your daily use of Git much more simpler. The first step for this task is simply just to download all the software that we're going to need. So by now you should already have a GitHub account if you followed the previous tasks. If not, head over to github.com and sign up. The next step is to download and install the latest version of R. This is the project for statistical computing and it's also available for Mac and Linux users. Step three is to download and install the latest version of RStudio. Note that this is open source too. Finally, you want to download and install the latest version of Git. When installing Git, make sure to select Use Git from the Windows command prompt during installation. 
Also, when installing Git, when it says use git bash as shell for git projects, make sure to select this. This is a place where you can use the command line to access git from outside of RStudio, and it's a pretty powerful beast. For now, just choose all the usual default options for each install. Depending on which operating system you use, this might be a little bit different for each of you. For now, and for the rest of this task though, we're just going to stick with doing things the easiest way using Windows. But we'll also hopefully provide some instructions for those of you who want to experiment with the command line. If you're a Linux or a Debian user, simply use the following command popping up on screen now to install git. If you want, you can also download the local version of git and use it through the simple graphical user interface. It's available on Windows and Mac and Linux and can help to make your life a little bit easier, especially if you want to use a different platform to RStudio. So, now we've done all the easy bit, the installation and downloads. The next step is to configure Git inside of RStudio. In order to do this, go into RStudio, and in the tabs at the top, click Tools, then Global Options, and this little pop-up will come up, and go down to where it says Git forward slash SVN. SVN is just another version control system like Git, but we don't need to worry about that here. So, in this new pop-up window, there are several options for you. In the place where it says git executable, add the pathway here to the git.exe file that you just downloaded in the previous step. Make sure that the box here that says enable version control interface for RStudio is clicked. This now has tied version control to all of your future projects in RStudio to provide a really powerful additional dimension to collaborative or solo work. Next, in this window, hit the button that says create RSA key. This is a private key that will be used for authentication between different systems and saves you from having to type in your password over and over. Here, it will pop up in a new window with a public key that you'll want to save to your clipboard. Once you've copied the key to your clipboard, head back over to GitHub and go to your profile settings. On the left-hand side, go to the SSH and GPG keys tab, click there, and what you want to do is create a new SSH key. Here, Paste in the key from RStudio and call it something imaginative, such as, for example, RStudio. Okay, once you've done that, what we're going to do is something perhaps a little bit more complicated for some of us. We're going to use the command line. Now, don't worry if you've never used the shell before, because it's quite similar to using R or any other coding system, really. The main difference here, though, is that instead of calling functions like you do in R, what you do is you call commands. So back in RStudio, go to Tools and click Shell and it will open up a new command prompt window. If you've already played with git bash before, you should have done this step already. What you want to do here is now enter the following two commands that appear on your screen. What this will do will configure your username and email to your RStudio and Git profiles. Make sure here to enter your own GitHub username and email here. You can access this at any point just by finding the shell within Windows. Alternatively, if you right-click now on any folder on your desktop that is linked to a GitHub repo or project, you can now open up the shell instantly and bash away. What this stage has now done is configure Git, which is software that runs on your desktop, to GitHub, which is the repository website. The next step is simple, just simply restart RStudio. Okay, so now we're probably trying to figure out, why did we just do that? Well, we're going to pause here just to learn some basic Git commands. The key ones that you could do with learning are the add. This is where you submit files to what is called the staging area before being committed. Committing itself is like saving your work by creating a new version or a copy of that work. Pushing is how you send files from your local project to the online repository. And pulling is how you get files from your online repository to your local project. Back in RStudio, let's try one of these out. Type the following into the, com into the terminal or by opening up a new shell. Git add dot. What this will do is then add all of the files from your current working directory into the staging area for Git. The dot signifies your current working directory, and what this does is it prepares your work ready to be committed to your repository. Okay, so now let's put this a little bit into practice. Now, in task one, you should have learned how to build your very first GitHub repository. If you haven't done that, head over and do that. If you have already, or you have an existing GitHub repository, we can move on. So what you should have is an existing repository now on GitHub, complete with things such as a readme file, a license, and maybe some other bits and bobs, such as contributing documentation. What we're going to do now is integrate that repository with Git. To do this, go to File, click New Project. Three options here will come up. 
click the one which says version control and then click git. Back on GitHub, go to any pro existing project repository. Here you'll see like a green button saying clone or download. If you click that, then you'll get a URL, usually with a HTTPS beginning. This is the link to your repository, and what it does is it gives you the option to clone in your desktop. For now though, simply just copy this link, switch back to RStudio, and paste it into the repository URL. The next two steps are to give it simply a project directory name, as well as to create the project as a subdirectory of an existing folder within your desktop. Click create project, and then we're done. What you've just done with this step is tell RStudio to associate a new project within R with a specific repository on GitHub. As an alternative to this, if you haven't built your first repository on GitHub, we can do something slightly different. In RStudio, click New Project, and instead of clicking Version Control, click New Directory. Create a new project, call this directory what you want, and make sure to tick Create a Git Repository here below, and then click Create Project. What this will do is create a .rproj file, which you can manage in the usual way through RStudio, including adding README and license files, as we discussed in Task 1. So, for Step 5, what we're going to do is teach you how to get more relaxed about just developing content. So do you remember that README file that we created a while back in task 1? Well if you haven't written that already, make sure to write that. If you already have, then that's cool. Remember that there were some specific things that we said make a really good README file. Do you remember what any of them were? If not, just to refresh your memory, these simple things were to describe what this project is about and what does it do, why should people care about this project and why is it useful, how can someone get started contributing to the project? Who can be contacted in case someone needs help? A link to the existing files such as the licensing, contributing guidelines, and code of conduct, as well as a basic description of the project structure, who is involved, what their roles are, and the current status of the project. So, in RStudio, open that README file and try adding just a bit of this information about this for your project. If you're doing this for an actual project, try and make it really useful. And if you're just tinkering for now, you can add what you want. On the screen now, you can see the README file for the content development subdirectory for this module of the Open Science MOOC. Remember that your README file is written in Markdown format. For a refresher on some of the simple syntax that Markdown uses, check out the handy cheat sheet linked to online now. Okay, so after playing with that, you should have a nicely edited README file. Now what we're going to do is commit this to the project using Git. This is basically the equivalent of saving this version of your project with a record of what changes were made. Successive commits produce a history that can be examined at a later time, allowing you to work with much more confidence. So within RStudio, there are a few ways of doing this. The first one is to go to Tools, Version Control, and click Commit. This will open up a new window with several options for you. What you might also see is that in the Environment pane in RStudio, there is also a new Git tab, which can come in really handy for this. As well as this, in the console pane, sometimes if we've, done, if we've done this correctly, there should be now something called a terminal, where you can run git commands through. For now, let's just stick with the second option and click the git tab in the environment window. Now, this git pane shows you which files have been changed and includes buttons for the most important git commands which we ran through earlier. Remember, committing, pulling, pushing, as well as adding things to the staging area. So select any files that you've changed. Files here show up automatically if you've made any edits to them. What this does is add those files to the staging area, which is sort of like the pre-saving space for your work. Click commit and a new window should pop up. Here, you now have a chance to review your changes as well as to write a nice commit message. Typing something brief but informative about the changes that you have made in this version or snapshot of your work. You want this to be enough information so that if you or someone else looks back at it, you'll know why you made this commit and the changes associated with it. These act as like safety nets for your project just in case you need to fall back for some reason. Here, you'll also see a list of the changes that you have made since your last commit. Older remove lines are shown in red and newly added lines are in green. Double check these to make sure that the edits you have made are the ones you intended to make. This is really helpful for spotting any typos, stray edits, and any other little mistakes you might have accidentally introduced. Safety first. 
Note that if you're colorblind and you can't see which lines have been added or removed, you can use the line numbers in the two columns on the left as a guide. Here, the number in the first column identifies the older version, and the number in the second column identifies the new version. Once you've written a commit message, make sure to click commit. That will open up a new window, telling you how many files you've changed and the number of lines now within that file that you have changed. Once this is done, you can close that window, and this one, and go back to RStudio. After this, simply click the push button in the top right of the window, and a new window will pop up. What this window is showing you is that it's synchronizing the files that you've changed on your local repository with the readme file or any other files that you changed to the online version of this project on GitHub. Now sometimes what you might get is a little error here that the push was rejected. In order to resolve this, simply click close, and what we want to do is pull from the repository first. What this does is pulls in any changes to the local version on my laptop or your laptop from the online version, which other people might have been contributing to. Once you've done that, simply close this window, click push again, and that should go through perfectly. Once that's done, close these windows down, and then you're done. If you want to do this from the shell, use the following command that's appearing on your screen now. Sometimes here you might be prompted to add your username and password from GitHub, which you should just do if you're asked. Once you've done that, go to your project on GitHub, click refresh and check that the readme file or any other files that you changed are all still there in their newly edited glory. You should also be able to see the commit message that you made next to the file too. If you found that easy, there's an optional advanced step for you here. What you should have just done is push some content to your first repository. And if you want to put this into practice for a real project, what, we'd, what we've provided is a step-by-step -step guide for you to actually contribute to this MOOC in some way. If you want to avoid that step, then congratulations, you're finished. What you'll have just done is integrated Git with RStudio and made your first change to a version control project. Your life now will never really be the same, and your research workflow itself should become much more rapid, agile, and collaborative than ever. So there's no real reason for you to come back to Word after this. The great thing is, is that this, this workflow doesn't have to be just used for code. You can use it for plain text, markdown, HTML, as well as R code. The possibilities are really limitless, because what you've just learned is a new form of openly collaborative project management that works for an enormous range of tasks. So from now on, it's really all up to you. Some advice is to make frequent commits. Treat Git like your puppy, and that it requires constant and special attention. Just a pat on the head every now and then is enough to keep it satisfied, but it'll be happiest with sustained servicing. The best way to do this is to make a commit each time that you work on a specific problem. For example, just simply writing a paragraph, running an analysis, or fixing a bug in your code. As well as this, make sure to push often. Don't let those commits build up, otherwise you run more risk of getting into merge conflicts. Seeing as these can be the stuff of nightmares, simply just make sure to push often. As well as this, make sure to pull often. If others are working remotely on the same project, you'll want to stay up to date with their changes. Make sure to frequently pull in their changes from GitHub to make sure that you're all in sync. Make sure to experiment and explore too. This task really only scratches the surface of this workflow, and there are many different functions, tools, and ways this can be, can be used. Really, it's up to you to find out how to use this information to improve your research workflow and ultimately to collaborate on better, more open, and reliable research. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about things like issues, branches, merge conflicts and pull requests, and other more advanced aspects of using Git in RStudio, check the awesome guide appearing on screen now by Hadley Wickham. Do you know a way this content can be improved? Well, it's time to take your new GitHub skills for a test run. All of the content development primarily happens on GitHub, on the link appearing on screen now. If you have a suggested improvement to the content, layout, or anything else really, you can make them and it will automatically become part of the MOOC content after ver verification from a moderator. So thanks all for listening and congratulations on getting this far. Um, we really hope that this has been very useful for your research workflows.